Hello guys, this is Satyajit Patnaik and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Again, we are starting with the same starting page, Vanishing Gradient and Exploding Gradient Descent uh, in the screen page, but yeah, with a different topic, right? Today's topic is about understanding what exactly is exploding gradient problem. So let's get started. <laughs> previous videos uh, we have learned about a lot of topics just giving a small recap we learned about chain rule of back propagation then we learned about what is vanishing gradient problem why sigmoid function shouldn't be used in each and every neural networks hidden layer right so there is a long story about that you can just read about it i have already spoken about the story in the last class today's video is more of what exactly is exploding gradient problem? Now, before getting started with this problem statement, just wanted to let you know that exploding gradient problem has nothing to do with sigmoid function. Okay, exploding gradient problem is all about weights. So today's example, we will try to explain what is exploding gradient problem. So I have defined a small uh, network here, neural network with a one input neuron. I have two hidden layers and I have one input layer, eh, sorry, output layer. So as you can see, W11 dash, W21 dash, W31 dash, and I have the O11, O21, and O31. So these are the weights which are assigned, W11 dash, W21 dash. Okay, so W11 new is equals to W11 old minus eta of, I mean, minus eta multiplied with the loss function, right? DL by DW11, uh, DW11 old. This is my loss function, this is my learning rate. And again, if I explain about the chain rule, chain rule of backpropagation, if we have n number of hidden layers, there will be n number of multiplications here. And so this is basically a chain rule, right? So D, D L with respect to D W11 old is nothing but, so why do we have that? Just, uh, just a small uh, recap, if you have forgotten, when we backpropagate in a neural network, so changes with respect to W31 is impacted here and then here, and then that's where your impact happens. So W11 dash is impacted by W O O11, O21, and O31 as well, right? This is the chain rule of backpropagation. Now, we will be considering this particular thing. So let's see, I have defined here a Z. Okay, let's say I am defining the bias here as B1 and B2. Now, if I had to write what is Z, Z is nothing but, now all, we already know that what goes into the next layer is the combination, the, the multiplication of weight into input plus bias, right? So Z is nothing but W21 multiplied with O11 plus B2. Okay, this is what Z is. So if I define Z here, it is nothing but W2, w, uh, W21 multiplied with O11. That means which is coming as an output of this hidden layer. That is W11 multiplied with weight plus bias, right? Now just consider this piece of code, derivative of O21 divided by O11. So I'll just write it down here. Derivative of O21 with respect to O11. Now, after we know Z, what goes into the next phase? We already have an activation function, right? So we also know that an activation function is assigned. So activation function with respect to Z, right? So my D w, D, uh, derivative of O21 divided by derivative of O11 is nothing but derivative of sigmoid of with respect to Z divided by dz into dz divided by d11. Okay, now what is this? What is sigmoid of z? We already know that derivative of a sigmoid function always ranges between 0 to 0 0.25 multiplied with dz by d o of 11. Okay, I'm just rewriting this. I'm just writing it as something within the range of 0 to 0 0.25 multiplied with d by d 
O11 of Z. So I'll replace Z here. Z is nothing but W21 into O11 plus B2. We already know that if we have five of X, like five X, the derivative of five X is nothing but five, right? Similarly, the derivative of W211 into O11, this is nothing but again, something between zero to 0 0.25 multiplied with, if I had to write it down, if this is X, this is X, and this is a constant value. So your output will be a constant, right? So W21 plus zero, because this doesn't have X. So derivative of X of a constant value is always zero, right? So this is going to be my output, zero to 0 0.25 multiplied with W21. Now, as I already told that exploding gradient problem is not relevant with sigmoid function, but it has something to do with weights. What happens is weights, how weights are initialized is not up to us. It is neither a hyperparameter as well, right? So let's say, a situation where my W21, the old value is, uh, let's say 500. So the old value of W21 is 500. So what will be the new value of W21? 0 to 0 0.25, so something within the range of 0 to 0 0.25 multiplied with the old value. Now, again, the best possible value is 0 0.25. Now let's not consider the best possible value Let's consider some intermediate value, let's say 0 0.1. Now 0 0.1 multiplied with 500. So what is the value? 50. That means Y21 dash, that means the new weight of W21, sorry, not Y21, W21 is, the old weight is 500 and the new weight is 50. You can see the difference between the old weight and the new weight varies a lot. It's almost a reduction of 90%, right? So from 500 to 50, that means the weights are drastically changing. So when, whenever this situation happens, new weight and old weight varies a lot between two consecutive iterations, this scenario is called as exploding gradient problem. Okay, now you would say why it has nothing to do with sigmoid function, however, we are using sigmoid function here. This issue is not relevant to sigmoid function. This issue is related to very high weights. If your initial weights are initialized with a very high numbers, let's say currently the value would have been five. Now, what, what will be the final outcome? It would be 0.5. Again, it's a reduction of 90%, but it's still manageable. It, it's up to your call. It's going to be a developer's call, but these issues usually happens when you are running your neural network, your loss function drastically drops or it drastically increases, or else you can see a very sudden spike of accuracies. Let's say in your iteration number 71st, your accuracy was 71. And in next iteration, the accuracy is probably 50s or in 80s. It could be one of the reasons. So exploding gradient problem is very common and it only occurs when there is high amount of weights, like when the weights are initialized with high values. Okay, that's all about exploding gradient problems. These are the two common problems in neural networks. Now, how to get rid of these problems? Obviously, when it comes to the practical part, we'll have to show it and show it to you, uh, how it works, how your problem occurs. But theoretically, today's topic is all about theory. In the next class, we'll probably have a practical session on this particular scenario because replicating the scenario is also a challenging job. Okay, so let me see if I can replicate it. If not, I will just explain you so that in real scenarios, when you, when you, when you, uh, when these kind of problems occur, you can just deal with it. Okay, so one of the problems, one of the solutions to vanishing gradient problem is using the ReLU function instead of sigmoid function at all the hidden layers. In the output layer, if it's a binary classification problem, you can use sigmoid function, but just ignore using sigmoid functions in each and every hidden layer. One or two hidden layers, it's okay. But again, ReLU is uh, preferable 
or you can use softmax or you can use anything else but again sigmoid and tanh just try to uh, ignore them just try to uh, try not to use them in all the hidden lists apart from that there is an optimizer which is uh, called as rms prop optimizer that was also introduced to get rid of the vanishing gradient and excluding gradient problems okay in case you want to more know about uh, the rms prop optimizer i will probably make a video on that and the third part is the solution of vanishing gradient problem is use of lstms because lstm cell itself has a forget get if we uh, if you are not sure about how lstm works maybe you can check out one of my videos which is already there in the channel uh, you can know more about lstms okay lstm internally is a replacement of a hidden layer and i mean the hidden dense layer and it internally has a forget gate so there is a lot of concepts in lstm so let's not talk about that now some of the solutions to exploding gradient problem would be using a truncated back back propagation or else you can also use rms prop optimizer okay these issues are very rare um, not very rare but yeah it happens sometimes so before it happens you always take precautions okay that's it about today's video i hope you had a enjoying session you understood about vanishing gradient and excluding gradient problems in the next topic we shall be covering some of the uh, some unsupervised learning techniques which is used in deep learning called as uh, rbams uh, and uh, self organizing maps and auto encoders thank you guys thanks for watching please like share and subscribe the channel uh, please press the bell icon in case you have uh, not yet done to get notified on my future videos thank you everyone